Hello there and welcome. My name is Michael Fudge and this is an SQL screencast. Today I'm going to show you the ins and outs of the SQL select statement. I'm going to talk about some various things that you can add to the SQL select statement to um, filter, sort, also customize the columns and some interesting special functions that you can do in your sorting and conditioning as well as some other modifiers to affect the SQL output and some basic join syntax as well. For this example I'm going to be using the Fudge Mart employees table. This is a basic select statement as you can see. In the select statement I'm pulling down all the columns and all the rows. If I want to see only the employees that work in a specific department, for example the housewares department, I would use the SQL WHERE clause. The WHERE clause allows you to specify a condition and under which it will only show the rows when that condition is true. So I'm going to add WHERE employee department equals housewares. When I execute it, I only get the employees that work in the housewares department. If I wanted to then sort these uh, employees by their last name, then their first name, I could use the ORDER BY clause. ORDER BY employee last name, employee first name. And then it should sort them by last name, first name. Also, I don't have to specify all the columns in my select statement. I can individually select the columns I want. For example, in this case, I'm just going to show the last name, first name, department, and birthday for the employee. Oops. Made a mistake as usual. Um, it's not birthday, it's birth date. Birth date. There we go, Mike. Let's see if that works better for me. There we go. So now I have uh, last name, first name, department, birth date. Now one of the first things that you'll say is, you know, what if I want to combine this output? Um, so that it's just one column. You know, it, internally it's stored as two columns, but you might want to display it as one, like all my friends are gone, or out of money, or patio furniture. Um, you can do that by column aliasing. For example, let me just move this down a line so it's easier to read. I can say select uh, employee first name um, plus a space plus employee last name as employee name. So the name of the column will be employee name, and it will be the combination of first name, a space, and last name. So check this out. Uh, and I need to put a comma at the end of my line, Mike. And there we go. So now it says employee name, employee department, birth date. Neat, huh? Oops. Okay, so what do I want to show you next? Well sometimes we need to do advanced filtering in the where clause and it's not as simple as always you know de department equals housewares for example maybe you want to see uh, everybody that was born in a particular month so in in this example you need to do a little bit of date parsing so there's date functions that you can use to help you with this so rather than where employee department I'm going to say where employee birth date uh, where the month of the employee birth date uh, is, let's say, let's pick a month here. Let's try March. See all the employees born in March. And I gotta spell birth date right. And there you have it. So if you look at each of these employees, they were born uh, in March. Uh, rather than just showing one month, you can easily, you know, say where the month that they were born is in uh, January, February, or March. So those are everybody that was born in either January, February, or March, et cetera, et cetera. Let me give you another example here. Rather than use employee birthday, I'm going to use um, um, employee hourly wage. And let me just kind of get a list of everybody and how much they make. Okay, so there we go. So now we have employee 
department and their hourly wage. So one thing you might want to do in this case is list out the uh, top five wage earners in the company, for example. So one thing I could do is I could order this by um, employee hourly wage and descending and that'll put the people that make the most at the top of course I'm at the top right so now you might be wondering well how can I just show the top five so I want to stop it at Sarah uh, and that's where the top modifier comes in play where you can say select top five and this will only show you the the top five from the output think about this as not really it's not really top as much as it is first because what you're saying is you know if I take this out and execute it this shows me all the output what top does is say run the query and then grab me the first three in this example and there you have it so maybe you want to see the top 20 percent right well you can say top uh, 20 percent that will retrieve the top 20% wage earners. But the idea here is that top occurs after the query has run, and then from the output it grabs the first, in this case, 20% of the output, the first ones. Sometimes we, we just want to see the departments um, that are different for each employee. For example, in this case, I'm seeing every single department for every single employee. But sometimes I just want to see the different departments that are that are out there. So this is where the distinct keyword comes in handy. Because what distinct says is take the SQL output and only show me the values that are different from the output. So if I execute this, I'm only going to see a list of employee departments that are out there in use. Another example is I can say select employee department and then employee uh, job title. So this will give me a list of, for every real employee, it'll give me their department, their job title. So this corresponds to the real number of employees in FudgeMart. There's 34 of them. If, if I use distinct, what I won't have anymore is I won't have 34, I won't have 34 rows in my output, I will have one row for each unique combination of department and job title. And this concludes yet another SQL screencast. The next screencast will focus on joins and the SQL aggregate operators as well as the group buy and having clause. Well, hope to see you soon. Bye.